www.tupelo.org. And students in Tupelo school districts are looking for a way to get away from class and get to the new arcade that the school has put in on campus as a positive incentive. And joining us here on Good Things to Tell Us More is Greg. Hey, Greg. Hey, how's it going? You know, I now understand I had the bright idea of you joining us on Super Talk TV from the arcade. You reminded me <laughs> that would be a little loud. It would be uh, very loud, and it is something that they built it, and they want to use it, and it pretty much is somebody in there all day long. It's incredible. It goes to show you how long it's been, Greg, since I've spent some time in an arcade, but it always brings back the best of memories. So how did Tupelo even decide, because this is one of its kind, to have a working arcade actually on campus at a school. It's genius, but who thought of it? I will have to give all the credit to Dr. Harbin. He's the new principal at Milam, and but he's not new to our district. And he came in and he wanted to do something to kind of help the kids. Hey, we've been through a pandemic for two years. School's supposed to be fun, especially for a sixth grade. And he wanted to, he just started talking to community members and we had a business guy said, okay, you come up with something and I will donate $10,000 to make sure it happens. So this businessman donated $10,000 and then the PTO pitched in to help with the mural that was painted on the back wall. And it just, it fell together. Everybody wanted to, to help with this project because it's so different, it's so unique. And our maintenance department went in and just all these cool things. I don't know if you were able to see some of the pictures that, that we had posted, but it, I, I, when I say it turned into a community event for one school that's a sixth grade only school, it did. And if people want to see those photos, Greg, I posted them in the Good Things Facebook group. I shared them from the school district's uh, Facebook page as well, opening up the conversation about thinking back to arcades and the time that we enjoyed those as youngsters or even adults, right? I think they look a little different now for our kids right. than they did for certain generations. So what does this look like? How many games are in there? Where is it on campus? All right, so it's in the gym, and the, the school opened in the late, late 20s, 30s, and it is the original gym, and up under the home side, it was just a storage, probably an old locker room, if I had to guess, when the school was the high school back uh, up until 1959, and so they cleaned it out, painted, I mean, it, when I went there for the first time last week, I, I didn't know what to expect, I thought I was going to open the door, and there's going to be maybe one or two old rusty machines. And I can't even tell you when I opened the door, my, my jaw dropped. I, I, it was, it was phenomenal. And, and I said, I told our photographer, Ryan Coon, before we walked in, if there's no asteroids in here or Pac-Man, I'm not taking it serious. And boom, the first two things were those two games. And there are pinball machines. Now they're digital pinball machines. So, you know, the, the kind that, that I grew up with, you know, you're not pulling and doing all that. It's all, all digital. And then the, there's the basketball count game where it's the little bitty basketball and you throw up. So there's, I don't know, 20 different games in there. And then they've got TV on the walls that you can play like Xbox uh, and different gaming components. Uh, I mean, it is, it is unreal. And then so the seating they... area too. And I know this is an incentive, right? Like Tupelo School District Correct. didn't just say, hey, let's take this great donation by a community member and give the kids somewhere to goof off and, you know, just not go to class. I mean, this is used as kind of the right kind of carrot dangled in, in students' face. And let's face it, we all like great incentives to, to do Absolutely. what? What are you trying to use this as within the school? Okay, so uh, let me back up, kind of give you a little history on something. So we yeah. adopted social contracts several years ago. So you have a social contract in like in my office, we have one and it's how you want to be treated under certain situations. How do we want to communicate? How do we want to tell our story? Well, then if you go, we've got 14 campuses. And if you go to each of those 14 schools, the schools have social contracts for when maybe there's a dispute or, hey, something good is happening. And then within each classroom has a social contract. So Dr. Harbin told the teachers, he said, hey, here's where I'm going to let you have free reign. You decide based on your social contract 
how the incentives for each class is done. So class A may be a little bit different than class B, but I mean, it's pretty much all the same. One thing though, Rebecca, he did not want was it to be grade-based and here's why. You know, when you have, uh, uh, what, seven, eight hundred sixth graders, obviously you're going to have your cream of the crop. Well, you got a kid that's happy to get that C. He may have worked or she may have worked harder than the person who works to get that A, and they're proud of that C. So why penalize them if, if it's not uh, all A's or all B's? And I thought that was fantastic. I love that. So you know they get behavior obviously is a big thing if they follow the social contract they get points you know if they do their work on time bus uh so if there is a bus that has no discipline referrals for that school that bus group automatically will get time in the in the arcade so it opens first thing in the morning it goes throughout the day and i can tell you the the hardest job on that campus is the one booking that room right now because they're fighting over it so it'll be interesting to see how the behavior uh referrals you know in, decrease towards the end of the year what a great way though to meet students where they are with something that they enjoy and connect with that generation obviously video games is a big thing it is still for a lot of adults it's the way they zone out or you know find their right. <clears throat> entertainment when they get home um and i too I, if you were watching at super talk tv i'm i'm over here applauding the it not being necessarily grade based as well because you know having my own children in in the school system they're better at one subject than sort of the other right. and we try to talk about your best effort is all we want not necessarily the best grades and so kids need to be reinforced that there are other things that matter too besides the A's and the B's and that's your behavior and your conduct and your kindness and so man I just wish every school had the opportunity to have this type of program or incentive it's just in the sixth grade now Greg do you see other arcades in the Tupelo school district I do. Uh, we need to find 14 more business people willing to donate about 10 grand. And I would tell you, it's about a fifteen, sixteen thousand dollar investment. Um, you know, by the time you get all the equipment, the work, the electrical, the painting, the lighting. I told Dr. Harbing yesterday, we got to have a disco ball in there somehow, just to really rev it up another spot. But I'll also add this: I've had other schools not in our district already reach out to me to want more information about it. You know, I don't know if it's the first in the state. It's the first I've heard about. It. It's obviously the first in our district. But the fact that I've already had three school districts reach out to me wanting more information, you know, this I don't want to say it's going to become the norm, but, I, you know, who knows? I think positive reinforcement, though, should be the norm. I mean, obviously, there should Agreed. be a standard of conduct that you should have to have just to, you know, you know, be an adult. You shouldn't get applauded every time, you know, you say your yes sirs and no sirs. But <laughs> I think at the, in those informative years, I think, utilize, you know, reinforcing the behaviors you want, the kids start to pick up on that as well. Like, okay, that's not getting me to the arcade. So maybe if I am a little kinder to the teacher or my friends, I'll get some time uh, with it as well, as well as the bus, because you know, like one student goes off rogue on the bus, the whole bus goes rogue. But if one student can stop that, right, and say, "Hey, I want the arcade," shush, and then exactly. you can see a, yeah, I think this is genius. I love it. Where can folks, if they are interested in learning more about what's going on in Tupelo, where can they get in touch with you? Uh, they can, uh, we're on, we're on every social media platform. We're very active on Twitter at Tupelo schools. Um, then of course, Facebook and Hey, I'll give you my phone. If you're interested, it's uh, 662-620-6195. Uh, look, this is a great story and we, we think it's, it's phenomenal. We have a, we have a program we call capturing kids heart. You capture their heart, you capture their soul, you capture their mind. And once you have that, great things unfold learning-wise. And we've already, you know, since we implemented that program, we've seen our discipline much better. So this is just another step uh, in that, that process to improve every area of our, of our students. All right. Do you know the high score for Pac-Man there at the arcade yet? I don't know, but I will say when we opened it up last week, the teachers were get they were the grand opening. They the ones who got to enjoy it, and uh, they looked like I don't know who was more excited, the teachers or the 
kids uh, when they first got to go in there. Well, Greg, we will follow this story. It's such a good one coming out of Tupelo School District. Thank you for your time and all the good that you guys are doing. But stick with us. we got more for you coming up next.